Shalom, family. Shalom. It's good to see all of you. I won't, I won't be keeping you long, but I want y'all to see something that has come out over the last few days. And it's something we all knew was going to happen. We all knew this. Is there anybody on this planet that did not know this was going to happen? I don't think so. Let me go ahead and share my screen and we will get started. I have a, a few articles to show you. Shalom family, shalom. Thank you. The only JS for that one. All right, so let's get started, y'all. Let's go ahead and get started. Now, about a week ago, I saw this article. All right. And this is over one week. Last week, 94,000 children, 94,000 children hit with Delta. 90 in one week. Right. And this is because remember in August and at the end of July, a lot of schools reopened, especially down in the South where they tend to start earlier than they do up here in the Northeast. Ladies and gentlemen, the same thing that happened last year is happening this year. And the, the sad part is kids are getting hit the worst this time around. There's a lot. I, I was talking to my uncle a little over a week ago, and he said in Florida, it is a lot of children hospitalized down there. They are getting slammed with this thing. Now, last year, it was mainly adults getting it. This time around, the kids are really getting it bad. And it's a shame that this is happening. But these folks are insisting on pushing their children out to school. So, okay, okay, so you sent them back to school and now they're bringing this to the whole family. And how are you going to do the same thing, the same thing, y'all, that didn't work last year? It's not working this year either. And, and the thing is, they are not deviating from the way they did it last year. All right. All right. We're going to go over here since that popped on. on Monday and goes through Friday, August 27th. In Crisp County, starting today, all high school students will learn virtually. The district says that decision comes after a spike in COVID-19 cases at the high school. The district says their virtual learning lasts until August 23rd. All other schools remain in person. All right. So this is Georgia, y'all. It's Georgia. All right. So I want to thank Matthew Odom, one of my subscribers, for sending this article. So this is Chris County High School. They're going virtual. Now, I don't know what's going to happen on August 23rd. <laughs> You're going to send them back to school just to get sick all over again. And Macon County is going completely virtual. So it doesn't matter if they are in kindergarten all the way up to high school. The entire county is shutting down the schools and going virtual immediately. Monday. All right. These kids are getting sick, y'all. I mean, I guess, do you really want to be in charge that bad where you're going to sacrifice your children? What did you really think was going to happen with you sending them back and you now got a variant that's far worse than what was here last year, but this is the perfect time to send your kids back to school? <laughs> Woo! A man, maybe y'all should talk to people in Kenya. They may be able to, uh, you know, direct you in a much better way. But this is the things that are happening in America right now. And this is a disgrace. These folks, you know, mainstream news, they're just telling you, oh, go get the jab. You got to get the jab. And now they're trying to force it on people. Now, um, 
earlier this week, we saw the military, it's mandatory. And now, now y'all, it's becoming mandatory if you work for the government. Those stories are coming out now. They are making it mandatory if you work for a government agency in order for you to keep your job, guess what you got to do? Okay? So this is going to be a mess. And you know what the sad part is? New Jersey is going to be opening schools and doing the same thing the rest of the country did. And I'm telling you, these kids aren't going to last a week. They're not going to last a week. What is the point? What is the point? Your now your kids are going to infect the entire family now. Is that the end goal? You know. So what are parents going to do when you have small children and those kids can't go to school and you got a job? What are you going to do? Because it's going to happen. You're, you are maybe going back to work or you may have worked all along and now your kids are coming back home to you. So now you're going to have to figure out what to do to make sure they get online to do their virtual class while you're at work. <laughs> you know what's going to happen, right? Less and less kids are going to show up, especially if there's no parent around to supervise those kids while they're online, you know what's going to happen. Yeah, and a lot of healthcare workers are walking away, uh, Dark Knight. A lot of them are leaving. In fact, there is a shortage of nurses, there's a shortage of all kinds of healthcare workers out there right now. And because they're making it mandatory, a lot of them are just leaving. They're leaving. So, you know, healthcare is in the same condition as the rest of the country with not enough people. And the ones they got working are stressed the hell out. They are woe out for real. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, Dark Knight, we all saw that coming. I mean, it didn't last a week. Isn't this what happened last year? They opened everything up. Oh, these kids need to get back in school. They need there yeah, because you're sick of your kids. We know why you want them out the house because you're tired of them. So now they go back and in one week, they're back home. Well, how does that make sense? How does this make sense? You know, I was looking at a map and, and some of you start looking at the map of the country and see how red the nation is becoming. It, I mean, when you look at the map, when I looked at the map at the end of July and looked at the map today, America is practically all red. There's a few spots that are in the yellow or maybe in the blue but the majority of the country is in the red. And it's going to get worse because you done sent the kids out there and the kids are now going to infect. They said you can affect one person can infect up to what? Nine people. I mean, it's, it's crazy. And to me, America, you're just making things worse. And, and I saw, um, Australia, they went back to a lockdown. Boy, I feel bad for some of them people. You're going to be locking down with mice. <laughs> They're going to be locking down with the damn mice. Yeah, they're, they're just making the children sick. And um, my uncle was right. He said a lot of these children are in the hospital. I was looking at a story this morning out of Florida and it was a mother and her 14 year old had to be hospitalized because it was just too severe. So, and she was having a lot of physical 
issues. So she had to be hospitalized, a 14 year old. Here in Indiana, top so let me just, let me just, let me just take that off because it keeps coming on automatically. So, um, yeah. So and then this child recently had to be hospitalized down in Florida, 14 years old. So it's making a, a big difference now that the children are getting it. They're getting hit so hard with it. But you know what, y'all? Isn't this very biblical? Didn't the Most High go after the Egyptians firstborn? He went after their children, didn't he? This is really a very biblical thing that's going on right now. For real. You know, well, you know what? As long as things are the way that it is, homeschooling Pink Meadows is going to be a way of life in America, whether they like it or not. And that's really the root cause of this whole thing. These folks have been home with their children for one year. Many of them got badass, undisciplined children, and they know it. And they done got sick of them and want them the hell out of their house. So they are pushing them out there and it's all in vain because they're coming right back home and the school district's got to close down. So doing all of this, getting them back, oh my goodness, is um, so doing all of this is really counterproductive, isn't it? Counterproductive. But ladies and gentlemen, this is the kind of leadership we have in America. I want you to reflect back all over your life of these folks being in charge and tell me, has it been good? Be honest. Has it been good? <laughs> Do you see anything good happening from them now? Uh, where is it? Now, you know, they know how to talk a good game and pat each other on the back and talk about greatness that nobody ever sees. But is it really, really good? Thank you, uh, Christopher Harris, for becoming a new channel member. Is it good? Have you seen really exceptional leadership in your lifetime? Be honest. Have you seen it in your lifetime? Many of us go through a whole lifetime and not see this greatness that we keep getting talked about. <laughs> People keep trying to claim they got. Do you see any greatness in the way America is handling COVID? Do you see the greatness in it? <laughs> if they were honest, they would know they don't see it either. You know, let's just be real. Some people are just not meant to lead. They may have the intentions on wanting to lead, but that's not what they are. Thank you, Tonette Grayson, for becoming a new member. No. Look, we know what exceptionalism looks like. We do know what it looks like, but... You've been on many jobs. Some of y'all been on a few jobs. You may have held the same job for maybe 10, 20, or even 30 years. Have you seen greatness on that job? Thank you, Loveline, for the super sticker. Have you seen greatness on that job? <laughs> have you seen greatness? Never, never seen it. That, that's really an honest answer. That's really an honest answer. So if you don't see greatness in your everyday life from these folks, how are they going to save America? How are they going to save America? Thank you, Loveline, for the super sticker. Or, so if, if we know just the little things on a regular basis, we don't see greatness, then... How are a people like that going to save America? 
<laughs> you're right. Pink, blue, they can't. They can't. This virus <clears throat> has been kicking their asses non-stop. Okay? Non-stop for well over a year now. And they can't get a grip on it. All they can do is get mad. How you doing, Tareen? All they can do is get mad when we're talking about it and say medical misinformation. I'm not even talking about nothing medical. <laughs> I'm not talking about nothing medical. When I say these kids are sick, they are sick. They are sick. And, you know, um, Christopher, thank you again for uh, the super sticker. And, you know, one of my subscribers said something really interesting in an email to me. They said it could get to the point where they'll try to take people's children for not getting the jab. And I thought about that and I said, actually, it should be the opposite. They should take the children of the people that are pushing their kids out here, knowing damn well they got something out here that they have zero control over. I mean, it should be the opposite way. Yeah, they're not going to win this one. I don't care how defiant they are about not locking down again. I don't care how defiant they are in opening the schools. I don't care how much the districts are fighting with the governor and all that stuff. At the end of the day, you are on the losing side of this thing. Thank you, Justin March, for the super sticker. You're on the losing side of this. You're on the losing side. Plain and simple. So <clears throat> what do they say? It's stupid to keep doing the same thing and expecting a different result. Well, that's what America is doing right now. I guess they're still waiting for another result that's never going to come. You know, and they're concerned about CRT. I think you got bigger fish to fry. <laughs> Thank you, Loveline, for the super sticker. I think you got way bigger fish to fry than to worry about something like that. First of all, it don't look like your children are gonna be in school long enough for CRT to impact them. They're not gonna be able to be in school because this thing is hitting all of them, teachers, students, all of them, the staff. So I think you should put that on the back burner because your kids ain't gonna be in school long enough to even get that lesson at this rate. And as far as virtual learning, shoot, they haven't even caught up from last year. <laughs> they haven't even gotten all the work in they should have gotten in from last year. Come on now. Man, we are at the end. Nobody is concerned about all that stuff there. Oh, well, we, you know, it's going to harm our children. Well, um, something else is harming your children too. Okay, CRT? No, something else is harming your children right now. One thing about CRT, you can't give it to someone else. You, you, you can't um, go home and give it to the whole family. Mm-hmm. Yeah, o Onika is one of my um, subscribers. Don't block her. Don't block her. <clears throat> oh, Mike, you are so right about that, Mike McKinney. I disagree. I see the greatness in me and failures and losers and wicked. Yeah, you're right about that. <laughs> Mm 
Mm -hmm. You know, I was looking at Australia. Australia now is implementing a no jab, no job. And I said, yeah, they're they going to try to pull that stunt here too. But the bottom line is you can tell. Now, one thing about these folks, they can't hide their emotions. They try to, but that's one thing they have never perfected. In order for them to be on here whining and carrying on about jabs and this and that, they're scared. They're scared. See, one thing about this whole thing, their cops can't go out and throw it on the ground and scream it's resisting arrest. They can't do that with it, can they? They can't see it coming. They can't um, call the police on it. Karen can't go out in the street and attack it. Darren can't do that either. And they can't sick a canine on it, can they? They can't get the canines to, to bite it on the thigh. <laughs> okay? You can't do none of them things with this. So therefore, you don't have the upper hand and you don't have control over it. And that is the root cause of all the fear that is going on in America. What you're looking at on mainstream news every day, day in and day out, is fear. Fear. They can't control something that is doing a massive amount of damage. They can't control it. So what do they have left? What do they have left? Oh, uh, it, it, it's the people that don't have it. It's their fault. Divide and conquer. Keep everybody arguing and fighting all the time. That's all they got left. What else do they have left? What else do they have left? When haven't they played this divide and conquer game? They've been playing it for centuries now and they're doing it now. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter who got it and who don't. OK, because if you really read the news, both are wounding up in the hospital. Both are. But if you listen to mainstream news, it's only one kind of person ended up in that hospital, which is a bold faced lie. See, you can't fix something. If you are not going to admit what's wrong in the first place, then you have zero chance of fixing it. Thank you, Anika, for the super sticker. Thank you. And I'm sorry somebody tried to block you. Sorry about that. And that should never have happened. Um, <clears throat> mm -hmm. So just expect these stories to explode as we start moving into the fall. And we're just weeks away from that. We're not that far away from the fall, maybe a little over a month, right? And we'll see if they are better off then. I promise you they won't be at all. And, you know, and this is probably the worst one, but you can best believe there are more that's going to be worse than this one coming. Far worse. Mm -hmm. They seem to think, you know what it is, um, Darlene X. They seem to think they're never, ever going to have to shut down again. But the more children get sick in this country and they realize they can't just go to work and do what they want to do, the more likely it is going to shut down. You can't do what you want. So what are you going to do? Go to work and leave your child all sick and down and out all day while you out there trying to work? You're not going to be able to do it. And how are you going to return back to work if there's a great chance that you yourself got it? So just think about that. You got children with it that are going to make other people in that household sick. And those other people in the household, how are they going to return to work when you're infected too?
Mm -mm -mm. How you doing, Ray? Welcome to the channel. Yeah, the sun is so hot. <laughs> We're going through a heat wave right now where I am. You know, in the Northeast, when we hit the 90s, it, it is considered a heat wave over here. Now, I do know it's like triple digits over on the West Coast. Boy, they really been they've been getting their behinds handed to them. And I got another story that is coming out as soon as I'm done with the live stream over in Europe, especially in Italy, it got so hot, they're calling it Lucifer. It went up to 119.8 degrees in Europe. And Europe is also in triple digits. Europe is also battling um, fires. They got some really crazy out of control fire. Yeah. I, I saw that, uh, Christopher, it was, yeah, that you you guys are still going through the triple digits. So America is well, um, dark skin brother. They said with our heat index. Yeah. So one twelve. that's right. The heat. The, yeah. The heat index. Plus we had rain. So the humidity is, off the charts on top of all the heat. Yes, 119.8 degrees. And it they're over over there, they're in triple digits. It's so hot there, they're calling it Lucifer. <laughs> they're calling it Lucifer. So it, it's crazy. It's crazy all over. I mean, just think about it. We had flooding over there in Germany, probably the worst flood in their history. And over on the West Coast, places like Washington State, Oregon, you know, that never see temperatures like that now are in triple digits, which I believe it's going to become the norm. Just like that winter storm in Texas, I think that's going to become the norm. And, uh, and you know, and the tornadoes were through the roof. And now there's what, Tropical Depression Fred that they're expecting will turn into a hurricane that's headed towards Florida. I mean, it is just crazy what's going on. It is just so much happening. You can barely keep up. Mm -hmm. it, it is hot. <laughs> it is hot. I mean, it, it is crazy what's going on. And then um, don't forget about the droughts. The droughts are off the chart. And, and I was reading even Europe, they're going through a drought. Australia is going through a drought. You know, it seems like everybody's going through a drought right now. Thank you, Jill B. Uh, hello from Central Jersey. Hello to you. All right. Thank you for the super chat. Yeah, you, you have to have it running, uh, Dark Skin Brother. You have no choice. <laughs> you don't have a choice. You got to keep that baby on. Yeah, the rain. Um, last week, we had some hail. We had rain, and then it changed over to hail. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I was looking to, even online, even to this very day, the farmers' crops are grow, uh, the, the ones over on the West Coast. Man, though, I don't even know why they're attempting to even save that stuff at this point. They are so scorched up. It's not even, those crops are burnt to a crisp. If you go and look at the articles from out West, I mean, you're talking triple digits, that stuff, and you, you're you going through a drought in those areas, those crops are just burning up. They're losing their crops. Those farmers are literally losing their crops. Wow, Seanette, really? Usually they don't do that when it's real hot, but I guess they, they don't care. You know, when, when do these people ever care? That's why the world is mourning because it is not in their nature to care like that. It never have been. That's why the world is mourning when the wicked is in charge. The world is mourning. Mm 
Yeah, I was looking at a lot of the crops. It's, it's really bad. It is really bad. And, and many of those migrants that are out in those fields working were complaining that the owners would not even let them have water breaks or more breaks because of the intensive heat. So they were pissed off. And, uh, you know, once they walk away, they, they won't have nobody to harvest their crops. They sure can't go out there and do it in no triple digits. Shoot, they can barely go out there and do it in double digits. Oh, okay, Esther. Three volcanoes went off this past week. I believe it. All right, y'all. So I just wanted to get you caught up on that story about the children and how not even a week later, they're closing schools down, talking about the, we're going to close down for two weeks. Well, what's going to happen in two weeks? <laughs> this shit going to still be here in two weeks. So what are you going to do in two weeks other than you're going to be locking down again, a second, a third time. I mean, what are you going to do year round? That's not good for the kids either. So you're, you're saying in one instance, it's not good for them to be homeschooled. And then on the other instance, it's not really good for them to go to school for a week and then shut down again and go back and forth like that all year. That's not good for them either. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, there's something going on on the beaches here in New Jersey. They are finding bacteria, I think they said, from fecal matter on the beaches, on a couple of the beaches, and they would not allow people on there. It's some bacteria that's in the uh, sand from fecal matter. And they closed down some of the beaches. There's several of them. So many of them that love the beach, I mean, they're, I mean, it, it, it didn't hit all beaches, but some of them have gotten hit with some bacteria. And they said they have to keep people out, you know, off of those beaches. Yeah, so we shall see what happens, and I'll definitely keep you informed on what's happening out here, because it is crazy. Thank you, Nikiru, for the super sticker. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so everybody, please enjoy the rest of your day. And I'm going to go ahead and release that um, story from Italy so y'all can see that. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's got to be very hot for you to be calling that Lucifer. So <laughs> that says a lot right there. Yeah, you know, part of China is in lockdown right now. They had the lockdown. And I, I was looking at that. They locked down, I think, well over a week ago. They went back into lockdown because they, they also got the Delta variant there as well. I don't know, y'all. What do y'all think? Do you think if everything continues to get worse, which they're saying it will, do you think the attacks are going to start back up on the Asians again? I, I think it will. And it's not going to matter if there's protections in place, if people feel like their lives are not getting back on track. I'm just saying, you know, I, you know, I've just, just let me know what you think. Do you think it will start up again? You know, <laughs> we'll be seeing that all over again. Yeah, well, you know what they are? Um, they have been trying to blame us from the start. But here's what I have to say about that. Many of their own are not 
getting anything either. If you go back, Trump and his supporters, many of them said they were never getting that. So it's not just us, but we know how these folks operate. They'll overlook the people within their communities that's not getting it and then focus on us. That, that's how they roll. That's how they've been rolling forever now. So the people in their own community, they become invisible, but they only see us, you know, usually what they do. Um, Brandon Cruising's, you said uh, they care, but they keep making variants to take people out and those who survive will be forced with the jab to be uh, the permanent underclass forever to serve, <laughs> shake my head. Well, hopefully, you know what? One thing I can honestly say to you about that, Brandon, this whole system is all built on capital. So if anything takes it down, these folks don't have a backup plan. See, they've gone 500 years assuming everything was going to be picture perfect forever. So there is no plan on what to do if this capitalistic system don't run. We saw what happens. They have a meltdown and they continue to try to reopen and ignore it and act like they can overcome it. And we know none of those things are going to happen. None of those things are going to happen at all. So the way I see it, even in their best efforts to ignore this thing, they're going to have to pay attention to it, whether they like it or not. That's the way I see it. They're not going to have the luxury to ignore it. They may want to do that, but they certainly will not be able to pull it off. Yeah, I mean, look, the, uh, let me, Mr. The Original School, corporations are now pushing back their time to reopen for people to come back to the office. And just look at, at the state of America, who the hell would want to go back in an office? Are you for real? You know, those folks that want to go back, let them go back. That's crazy. So keeping it open and everybody is sick, that's a good idea. You know, and you notice how they don't talk about herd immunity either because they know that mess was a bunch of BS. If that's the case, how come you didn't herd immunity with your flu <laughs> or with your common cold, which have been around for thousands of years and there still has been no herd immunity to that? You know, at least during the Spanish flu, when they came out with the shot, they had to admit the shit didn't work this time around. <laughs> they won't admit it. They won't admit it. They just keep trying to play the blame game and trying their best to keep out of the news. The ones that got it are still getting sick, still getting hospitalized and still going to the bone yard. They're just trying to keep it all out of the news. But y'all please enjoy the rest of your day. If you're going through a heat wave, like I am stay cool and stay hydrated. Shalom, family.